They will drain the blood from men while women will be inspected by feelers. If qualified, they will be taken to the production base to cultivate the next generation of bloods. Dutch and Abraham are both controlled and then feelers start inspecting Dutch. After confirming her qualification, Dutch is taken to the production base. After being knocked unconscious, Abraham is also locked up. Dutch has been staying here for a few months. Unfortunately, she has not been able to conceive a child. If there is no successful pregnancy this week, she will be taken to have her blood drained. In order to escape, Dutch has no choice but to sacrifice her own body. She has made a deal with Jeremy to help her escape tomorrow. But as the time approaches, Jeremy suddenly changes his mind. Upon hearing this, Dutch becomes furious. She threatens to report to the person in charge if they don't stick to the plan. Jeremy is intimidated and agrees to take the risk. Then Dutch goes to the restroom and suddenly hears crying next to her. Dutch immediately asks what's wrong with the person inside. Rosalinda comes out and says she just had a miscarriage in the restroom. If it's discovered, she will definitely be sent to the slaughterhouse to have her blood drained. Dutch quickly comforts her and says she has a solution. Then Dutch takes Rosalinda out of the restroom and goes to Jeremy's studio. Jeremy is shocked to see two people and says the fridge can only fit one person. Dutch suggests sending Rosalinda out first this time. Although Jeremy disagrees, Dutch has the leverage and can only send Rosalinda out first. They mention there are only two minutes to escape. Just as Dutch and Jeremy start pushing the fridge out, Rosalinda's claustrophobia suddenly kicks in. She jumps out of the fridge. Dutch immediately approached and comforted, saying that she just needed to endure a few minutes before they could be free. Rosalinda was extremely scared and wanted to give up the opportunity to escape. Seeing the two still hesitating, Jeremy pushed the refrigerator and left. Dutch immediately blocked it and accidentally knocked the glass bottle off the shelf. Jeremy expressing that he wanted to leave right away. Dutch immediately got into a heated argument with Jeremy. The guard was quickly drawn to their argument. Upon witnessing this, he immediately reported to the nurse in charge. Dutch was about to explain when the nurse in charge rushed over and, upon seeing them, knew they were planning an escape. So the nurse had the guard take Jeremy away to be eliminated. Jeremy was terrified and his legs went weak upon hearing this. The head nurse is going to take them to the person in charge before they're dealt with. On the other side Gus took cream and they arrived at the partnership. He had made an arrangement with Raul to meet there, with the intention of seizing the stored food. Soon, Raul, who had been waiting behind the trash bin, came out. After exchanging greetings, Gus began to inquire about the location of the warehouse. Cream was ready to take action, but Gus stopped him and said they needed to deal with the surrounding bloods first. Then he instructed Cream and the others to hide. The blood sensed someone approaching but only saw a row of footprints when they turned around. While the bloods were puzzled, Gus suddenly stabbed one of them in the foot. Blood sticks Stinger out, only to be flung away by Gus in a death grip. Everyone was scared and broke into a cold sweat upon witnessing this. Afterward, using Raul's work ID, they opened the warehouse door. Once inside, everyone's eyes were dazzled by the abundance of food. They quickly started moving the supplies outside. Although Raul was an employee here, he did not have the privilege to eat these fresh food items. Seeing Raul's hungry gaze, Gus gave him an apple first. Without hesitation, Raul stuffed the fruit into his mouth, having not eaten fresh produce for half a year. However, in the next moment, the warehouse manager discovered the group stealing. Gus immediately grabbed his gun, but Raul stopped him. Their usual relationship was very good, so Raul hoped Eddie wouldn't interfere. However, Eddie said he had a wife and children to support and couldn't let this slide. Gus approached to comfort Eddie, saying they could share some of the food and medicine with him. He hoped that Eddie would keep this incident a secret. At this point Cream shoots straight for the kill. But Eddie ducks. Then, Gus and Eddie immediately chased after them. They followed the chase all the way to the food processing area. Just then, the alarm suddenly sounded. And Eddie, who was hiding in the dark, immediately slipped away. Despite Cream firing several shots, he didn't hit anything. They had to leave now or it would be too late. Gus quickly pulled Cream away from there. In the haste, only a small portion of the food was successfully taken out. Afterward, Gus and the others returned to their hideout. Raul expressed concern that Eddie would surely report him. Gus assured him and told Raul to stick with him from now on. However, Cream disagreed, saying that he nearly got everyone killed and only allowed Raul to stay for one night. Gus strongly opposed this idea, 
stating that Raul lost his job because of them. This led to a heated argument between the two. Gus was firm in his stance, so Cream reluctantly agreed to let Raul stay. On the other side, F and the resistance fighters from the Bloods were together. After F's treatment, Alex's teammate was out of immediate danger. To show their gratitude, Alex allowed F to freely choose the supplies he needed. Just then, there was an urgent knocking at the door. Upon opening it, they found an injured man. He explained that while on a mission, they were unfortunately discovered by the Bloods. The others were instantly drained of their blood, and he was the only one who managed to escape. F immediately sensed the gravity of the situation. He explained that once humans are turned into Bloods, their memories are known by the Blood ancestors, indicating that the place is no longer safe. Upon hearing this, Alex quickly instructed everyone to pack their belongings and leave. Learning that they had no other hiding place, F suggested they seek refuge at his place. Alex wasted no time and took action. Before leaving, she wanted to bring all the bombs with them, but F said there was no time. The Bloods would soon arrive at their location. He instructed everyone to grab the food while leaving the bombs for him to handle. Soon, everyone transferred all the supplies to the vehicle. At this time, the Blood followed the clues but found that there was no one left here. Only a pile of bombs remained in the middle. F asked Alex to wait while he checked for any survivors. A Bloods creature rushed out of the fire, and F immediately shot it on the spot. Shortly after, another one charged out from the house. Once it was confirmed that the Bloods were completely eliminated, F quickly left the area. That night, F led the resistance fighters to a safe place. F prepared to say goodbye, but Alex approached to stop him. She wanted F to join their resistance and fight against the vampires together. However, F was not interested. Having lost everyone he loved, he just wanted to live his life peacefully. Upon hearing this, Alex started accusing F of being a coward. Early the next morning, F started preparing a poison. Since there were no medical facilities available to create a virus, F decided to try using rat poison. This type of rat poison was essentially a potent blood thinner. F believed it could damage the blood's physiological structure, but the problem now was how to administer the poison. He suggested hijacking a blood tanker and posing as delivery personnel to drive it over. F dismissed this plan, as he knew how tight the security was for transporting blood tankers. If find out the delivery guys changed, they'll be suspicious, just when everyone was at a loss. F came up with a perfect plan. At night, F and Alex ambushed the bus in the partnership's overalls. After a long wait, a blood tanker slowly passed by their vehicle. F immediately started the car and followed it. As the car approached the intersection, Alex immediately signaled the partners to start the plan. Then, two cars emerged from the alley and collided head-on, blocking the entire road. The drivers of the crashed vehicles immediately got out and pretended to argue. F quickly pulled out a pipe from the bus and secured it onto the blood tanker. Seeing F's signal, Alex immediately activated the machine. Slowly, the poison began to flow into the blood tanker. The driver of the blood tanker got out and urged the two arguing individuals to leave. When he saw that they were still arguing, the driver threatened to call the Bloods patrol if they didn't leave. Realizing the situation, F quickly stepped forward and helped move the cars out of the way. As the Bloods patrol approached, the group joined forces to push the cars aside. By this time, the poison had successfully been poured into the blood tanker, and Alex quickly got out of the car and removed the pipe. The plan was successfully executed. F and Alex returned to the bus, watching the blood tanker drive further away. They arrived at the entrance of a blood's nest and observed from a distance. Since the blood tanker left, there had been no sign of any bloods coming or going. It seemed that the poison had taken effect. But to confirm, F decided to break in and take a look. Sure enough, F found dead bloodworms on the ground. They continued to explore deeper and found groups of dying bloods in the next room. It seemed like their time was running out. The group continued to venture deeper and discovered a pile of dead bloods under a staircase. It appeared that their plan was successful. On the other side, the blood ancestor sensed that something had happened in Philadelphia, and over 2,000 compatriots were poisoned to death. After hearing this, Eichhorst believed that it was definitely Abraham and his group who did it, so the blood ancestor instructed Eichhorst to go there immediately and kill him. On the other side, Quinlan and Vasily finally arrived at the missile base that Roman had mentioned. Strangely, there were many soldiers' bodies lying next to the missile silo. Quinlan immediately prepared to check if the nuclear bomb was still there. 
but he was stopped by Vasily. Vasily wanted to first check if there were any bloods. Vasily stood on the edge of the missile silo and took out two silver grenades from his pocket. Roman was instantly frightened after seeing this. Vasily explained that it was only silver dust inside the grenades, which could burn the hiding bloods. Fire in the hole! Seeing no reaction inside, Quinlan walked towards the edge of the missile silo. Some good news. This shot startled the people above, leaving them at a loss. Vasily took out a mirror from his pocket to see who was shooting, but in the next second, the mirror was instantly shattered, which worried Vasily about Quinlan. Fortunately, Quinlan wasn't in danger of losing his life, but he had broken his leg when he fell. Quinlan tries to see who's shooting, but he's knocked back before he can show his head. Vasily shouted towards the inside, stating that they were human beings without any malicious intent, and that he hoped that both sides could put down their weapons and talk. However, there was no response from inside. Vasily started to ask who Roman was. Roman reported his name and rank, but there still wasn't any response from inside. Vasily started to ask Roman if there were any other entrances. After learning that there was another exit, Vasily decided to go down alone to rescue Quinlan. At this moment, Quinlan was being held at gunpoint and unable to move. He decided to first treat his wound. Quinlan used all his strength to reset the broken bone, then grabbed a handful of silver dust from the ground and evenly sprinkled it on the wound. This would effectively stop the bleeding, but the pain still made Quinlan grimace. At this moment, Vasily had already entered through the emergency exit and started walking slowly inside. Quinlan saw the shooter at this moment who was completely focused and aiming below. After dressing his wound, Quinlan took out a gun to prepare for counterattack. Quinlan cautiously exposed his head, but was shot back again. Quinlan peeked out again and fired a burst of shots at the soldier. Meanwhile, Vasily quietly approached from behind the soldier. He shouted loudly at the soldier, hoping to have a conversation. However, the soldier clearly didn't trust them. When he didn't listen, Quinlan was ready to kill. 